All right, so things have started to get pretty interesting on the crypto front. We were in a, a bit of a lull there for a minute while everything was locked in sort of, uh, you know, a legal state. Everything was being processed, stuff like that. But uh, now we're starting to get some spiciness coming out of these these court cases that are going on. Um, first of which is the Sam Bankman Freed case. So huge news yesterday. Uh, Sam Bankman Freed has been jailed as the judge revokes his bail. So kind of a big deal there. So Sam is going back to jail, this time in the U.S. Um, if you guys remember when he was first arrested, he was put in a Baha or Bahamian, I don't know if that's how you say it, uh, Bahamian prison um, and was kept there for, I think it was like, it ended up being like two weeks. Then he was extradited to the United States where he's been living with his parents um, on house arrest. But now... Um, they have revoked the bail that they posted, and now Sam is going to be sent to prison. I'm going to read through this article a little bit so we can see why. So, Sam Bankman Freed was reported, reportedly let out of a New York courtroom in handcuffs after alleged attempts to influence or intimidate witnesses in his criminal case. A federal judge has reportedly revoked former FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed's bail following the release of information to the New York Times reporters in an alleged attempt to intimidate witnesses. According to reports of individuals at an August 11th hearing in the United States, District Court of the Southern District of New York, Judge Lewis Kaplan ordered Bankman Freed's bail revoked, suggesting he will be held in jail through the end of his two trials for fraud related to his activities at FTX. Prosecutors had been pushing for the re a revocation of Sam Bankman Freed's $250 million bail, which had kept him out of custody since his arrangement uh, or arraignment in December 2022. Kaplan reportedly said that Sam Bankman Freed's interviews with New York Times reporters resulted in sharing information with the likely intention to hurt or frighten or and frighten former Alameda Research CEO Carolyn Ellison. So we know who Carolyn Ellison is. Uh, if you guys don't, basically it was someone who uh, she led Alameda Research, but there was a lot of close, questionable connections between Alameda and FTX, given that Sam Bankman-Fried started Alameda, purchased Alameda, um, and then there was also some, like, relationship stuff going on there. That's a whole another story that you could go on for a while on. Um, I posted some other videos talking about this, um, you know, back when this whole thing started. But definitely, if you don't know who Carolyn Ellison is, she is a key player in this whole thing. Um, but yeah, so they're saying that Sam, through his interviews, was trying to intimidate Carolyn Ellison. Um, and I think that the reason they, they believe this is for, because Carolyn kind of kicked this whole thing off, allegedly, right? Allegedly, Carolyn came from the Bahamas, went to New York, um, and I guess ratted on Sam Bankman Freed is, is kind of the theory of how this whole thing came to light is that they think that, you know, they started to get investigated and she got ahead of everything and went um, and took a plea deal. That's what people are, are suspecting because she was in New York right before everything went down with Sam Bankman Freed. Um, before that, she was living with Sam in the Bahamas. So, yeah, anyways, it's kind of like a back and forth thing there. Um, so, you know, the rest of this kind of talks about the bail conditions and things like that. I'm not going to read the rest of it. But but yeah, so Sam is going back to prison, this time in the United States, while he waits his trial. Um, no more cozy at-home stuff for Sam. The next big thing is some breakthrough stuff that's been going on in the Coinbase case versus uh, the SEC. So... For those of you who didn't know, the SEC sued Coinbase, um, and there's it, they've been locked up in this legal state. I think Coinbase even countersued the SEC. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth there. Basically, Coinbase was trying to play ball with the SEC, um, and now the SEC wants to play hardball and try to strong arm Coinbase. Um, and we've seen that in a lot of different ways, but I want to read to you guys the memorandum of law that is in support of Coinbase's motion for judgment on the pleadings. We're going to go through the um the preliminary statement here because this really there's some really solid arguments against the sec here um and yeah i mean the judge has already shown signs of siding with coinbase which is pretty awesome we're going to talk more about that but first let's re uh, let's read this preliminary statement so uh two years ago recognizing that the sec wanted but lacked statutory power to regulate crypto exchanges Chair Gary Gensler asked Congress for a legislative mandate 
None came now without any intervening legislative act. The commission accuses Coinbase, the largest U.S. crypto exchange, of having defied the federal securities laws and failing to register as a securities exchange broker and clearing agency since 2019. Uh, no matter that the SEC allowed Coinbase to go public in 2021 with the same business it operates now. So this has been the big argument, right? Like, why all of a sudden is the SEC coming after Coinbase when just in 2021, they allowed them to go public, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff that they looked into. This is going to be key because this is where, uh, you know, the judge raises the same eyebrows. So we'll, we'll talk more about that in a second. No matter that Congress has for years been actively considering and just last week advancing legislation to grant and allocate, among other regulatory agencies, the very authority the SEC now claims for itself. The SEC wanted to get the jump. In making that jump, the SEC has violated due process, abused its discretion, and abandoned its own earlier interpretations of the securities laws. But there's a more fundamental problem with its case, one the chair recognized two years ago, and that entitles Coinbase to judgment on the pleadings now. The subject matter falls outside of the agency's delegated authority. The SEC may pursue its enforcement action only if relevant transactions in the digital assets and services identified in the complaint are investment contracts and therefore securities under the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Because as a matter of law, none of them are, the claims must be dismissed. So this, again, is another key piece. So basically, the SEC's argument is all riding on the fact that Coinbase is facilitating investment contracts. So uh, for those of you who don't know, like investment contracts would be like futures trading and things like that, which there's more to it of uh, the underlying definition of an investment contract, um, which I am not a like total expert on, um, like from a legal standpoint. But basically, Coinbase is saying like, look, none of these are investment contracts. We're not brokers. We're not any of these things. Um, we've even tried. I mean, they've even tried to file and get a broker's license and things like that, and they've had uh, problems in the past. So I, I don't. There's like a whole lot to unpack there. But basically, that's what the argument um, of the SEC is against Coinbase. So if they can invalidate the investment contracts, you know, theory behind this, um, then they Coinbase is arguing that the the case just must, you know, must be dismissed. Um, which there's some news that just broke about this. Um, so yeah, lots of to touch on after this. Let's continue reading. An indispensable feature of an investment contract, as defined by the Supreme Court um, in SEC versus W.J. Howey. And by the state securities law jurisprudence that grounded Howey is that it uh, at least purports to grant the purchaser a contractual right to the profits, income, or assets of a business enterprise. The SEC does not and cannot allege that transactions in the 12 tokens identified in the complaint that take place on Coinbase's secondary market spot exchange or on other secondary market exchanges through Coinbase Prime carry such rights. They are asset sales with no obligations of the buyer or seller discharged at any point of sale. Where their doubt on this score, the major question doctrine would require dismissal in defense to Congress's per, uh, prerogative to decide how to establish and allocate authority over the digital asset arena. Nor does Coinbase operate as a broker of investment contracts by making wallet software available to users. The token that the SEC says customers can self-custody using wallet Nexo is not alleged to carry any more rights to share in an enter any enterprise than the other 12 tokens identified. Even where, or even were it otherwise, the complaint pleads nothing to suggest that Coinbase functions as a broker under the securities law, making available to users free software, allowing them to store and access their own digital assets on their own computers or devices. So basically, Coinbase is saying like, look, we offer these wallets, yes, we do, but we're not brokering these wallets. They, they're into you know the the wallet owner is in total control of that wallet, whether it sends or receives money. That has nothing to do with Coinbase. Coinbase simply simply offers the wallet itself, um, but the control of the wallet again is it's totally done by the owner of the wallet. Finally, the SEC's claims targeting Coinbase's staking program fail as a matter of law because it, in fact, pleads. 
uh, pleaded and incorporated by reference, establishing that the staking service customers make no investment of money by staking through Coinbase's software, and staking customers receive uh, ministerial as opposed to managerial services from Coinbase. So, yeah, this is, I think, a really good preliminary argument for Coinbase, uh, multiple arguments there. Um, I think the F- SEC is going to have a really hard time, and the judge has already expressed, uh, again, skepticism over the SEC's argument. So, the judge in Coinbase's case expresses skepticism over the SEC's prior S1 approval, which is uh, the approval of Coinbase going public. And uh, this is straight from the judge here. It's a quote from the judge. It says, it's not crazy in the fail up parlance uh, for Coinbase to think that what they were doing was okay because it was exactly what you let them do when they issued the S1. So basically the judge is saying here like, look, it's not crazy for Coinbase to think that they were in the right because when they filed to go public, you approved it and they're doing the same things that they were doing when they filed to go public. Um, the SEC countered and tried to say that simply because the SEC allows a company to go public does not mean that the SEC is blessing the underlying business or the underlying business structure or saying that the underlying business structure is not in violation of the law. Um, to which the judge replied, I am not saying that the commission should be omniscient at uh, at the time it's evaluating a registration statement and that it should know all things. But I would have thought that the commission was doing due diligence into what Coinbase was doing. So they're basically saying like, look, we didn't expect you to know everything that Coinbase was doing at the time of their approval. But at the same time, like you're arguing about their general business. Are you saying you approved Coinbase without knowing anything they were doing? I mean, Coinbase is a crypto exchange. You knew that they were going to be trading crypto when you approved their, uh, you know, their, their S1. So it's kind of weird that you would say that, oh, we didn't know that Coinbase was doing these things when it wasn't like a hidden thing that Coinbase is doing. It's like, it's like approving Apple to go public and saying, I didn't know Apple sold phones. It's like, what are you talking about? That's, that's their core business. Like Coinbase is a crypto exchange. Of course, there's going to be transactions with crypto going on on the platform. Like, what is your, like, what, like, how did you, how are you going to argue that you didn't know that? So yeah, guys, a lot of big stuff going on there. And is another thing that came out is that U.S. Senator Loomis, crypto lobbyists, urge court to dismiss SEC's Coinbase lawsuit. So this is a big deal. We know Loomis has been on the side of crypto for a while now, so that it's not like we've turned anybody but uh her argument uh in this filing is is great i'll link it down below if you guys want to read it but she got a lot of big brains in um from from universities it's not even just people in crypto um to make comments on this and there's a good chance that this dismissal could go through that's really where everybody's eyes are right now um and if you know if the case just got dismissed that would be a huge victory uh for crypto so Yeah, guys, we'll continue to keep an eye out for all this. I want to keep you guys up to date with all the legal stuff that's going on because there is a lot going on. Some of it can be hard to understand at times. Even like I have a hard time understanding stuff sometimes, especially when it's all written in legal mumbo jumbo, which I don't always understand. Um, But guys, if this is your first time to the channel, please like and subscribe. There'll be more updates like this coming. Um, With that being said, I will see you all next time.